Hey y'all, it's me again. It's been a while. I look a hot mess. I've, I've actually been working, been very busy, finishing up customs. And I am going to be doing this little piece for my shop. And I want to do something that I've never done before. So I invite you to join me in the hot mess that I'm probably going to create. Welcome back to Why Not Redesign. This is the little piece. It's not that big, but it's uh, probably for an entry, a hall, a small area somewhere. It does come with a mirror and I will match the color of the mirror to the bottom of this, but I'm trying to do a, not pour, I want to create somewhat of a marble look. I've never done it, but I have been very, very interested in doing one and um, I saw someone post one locally and I said, hey, I have a small enough piece. Let me try it. Why not? So let's get right to it. Well, for sure, I need to remove this hardware because it's not gonna be the move, it's kind of old. And this is a brand new one to me. I've never seen this type of hardware on the back. It is an Ethan Allen piece, definitely vintage. And that is on every single piece on both doors and the thing. So I guess it maybe comes out from the front. Let me go try to remove this. I thought I showed you guys because this one is pretty cool. I have plenty of these, but they always have just a regular, um, I guess it's a bolt in the back. And this one is very different. It has these little feet on it. I don't know if I'm focusing right, but it has those little additional little pointy things that go, I guess, against the back of the uh, wood in the back. And then these are ceramic. They're very cool. I'll definitely keep this for something else, but um, I don't think this, that I want to reuse them on this piece now. Bucket number two. Gross, it's not getting any better. I'm gonna bring you guys closer because I don't want you all to think that I'm just exaggerating. I have bucket number three. And you can see, it's hard to see. But there is still, I think this is tar from smoke. Let's look how dark that is. All of that is come off this. The poor towel is literally gross. And let's not talk about that water. And you can tell right there. That is the top. And that's what's on it. I haven't even done the top yet. Crazy. When I mentioned the number of buckets that I use, this is how I started. Clean water, clean rag, clean brushes every single time. This will be bucket number four for the same little tiny piece. And I haven't even done the mirror. How about that? Ugh. I'm literally gonna take a break from that and go to my booth because I have another project going on over here. 
is some nightstands i'm doing and they're already painted for this i'm only going to be doing a reel from my instagram so if you're not on my instagram go and follow there so you can watch this one I'm going to stop here today. I will show you guys where the, this is. I just finished staging this because I had some help. It was pretty heavy. Um, have two more pieces for the client that I also staged. I might just throw the pictures over here so you guys see them because I did not record those. I was finishing up um, customs that I needed to get out. I also finished the nightstands and again, those will be on Instagram. But let me show you where this little piece is and where it will stay tonight. I'm on my way out. It's drying out, as you can see. No longer hazy because it's dirty. It's just hazy because it's got damage. And um, I'll literally do a scope sanding tomorrow, but it's now clean. The drawer and the shelf were also cleaned out. The inside is clean. Everything is clean. So much better. So much better. I'll get back to it tomorrow. Day two, here we go. So this is where we dropped off yesterday. Today the piece is completely clean. There's nothing else coming out of it. I'm gonna still scope sand it and then start the priming process so that I can paint this and hopefully finish it today. We shall see. As the white base for this little top, I'm going to be using Silk by Dixie Belle in the color White Cap. This is an all-in-one paint, so that means that it has the primer, paint, and top coat included. I want to do that purposely because I don't want to have to top coat this between each of the coats that I will be doing, and I'm probably going to do two to three coats. Mixed a color because I wanted a color. I don't know what color I want. I want a brown with a green undertone or a green with a brown undertone. I don't know which one it is, but this is not the color that I want. So back to the drawing board and mixing a little bit more green into this. But I'm almost there the color that's in my head and I'm starting from scratch and making my own paint for it so sometimes you have that in your imagination and it's a little bit hard to execute let's go back to the drawing board no big deal so I mixed more green into that paint and this brown is still wet but this is more of the color that I want I think I'm getting it. This is the one I want. See the difference? The brown right here versus the green that I actually just did. Love it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create some depth in on the on the top of this, and I'm going to be using gravel road, which is a 
really dark gray and I'm basically going to be using just a chip brush and I'm going to go over the entire surface of the piece gonna do more of a maximalist style with the veining than a minimalist and I'm going to combine gray and black and some probably brown on it While this piece is drying, I'm going to show you guys the color that I created and it doesn't come through as brown on screen as it does here personally. Um, I combined several colors from Lily Moon Paint and came up with this color. It's just a color that I have stuck in my head and I'm going to go for it and I love it. It does look green, it has a lot of brown in it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the roller that I've been using for with the white paint and I'm going to basically do my wash with it. This paint that I've been using, if you guys recall, is the Dixie Belle All-in-One. It doesn't take water very well, so I'm going to take a chance by basically just wetting this and creating my own wash with it. So it's probably going to be an unpopular decision, but I'm going to try it anyway. I think what I love the most about this technique that I'm doing is that there is no right and no wrong. Now I'm going to be using Dark Roast by Lily Moon Paint and I'm going to be putting some brown into this color that I really want because I want the brown to go with the paint.
I decided to do a little bit more um, dry brushing with the gray on top of the brown to soften it and on top of some of the black in some areas just to soften it just a tad. I love it! Is exactly what I wanted. Now I gotta wait and top coat. Decided to do the second coat in um, an extra little spot coating here and there on this piece with a roller. I'm not much of a roller. I pretty much use just a brush or the sprayer and I don't know why I don't roll enough. Or more this is very fun and it leaves a very smooth finish on the pieces before I forget to, to show you these pieces these are the two that I showed you at the end of day two these are happily at home with my customer and she loves them. So do I. I top coated the piece several times and by several I think I did a total of six coats. So I want to make sure that this has very strong durability and I did it with a satin finish. I really really like it. What do you all think? Leave me a comment now and I am going to take all of the criticism good and bad. Please be very honest. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Now I'm cleaning the mirror. I use basically just any cleaner. I have a foamy one. It is to clean glass. And I was trying to be very careful, but I still went over, overdid it again. So I'm doing just final touches on the mirror. I top coated those little areas as well, just to make sure that everything blends well. And finally, time to sage. One final clean of the edges of the mirror. And I really, really love this. That color that I created is everything that I wanted. It is green and moody, but it has a lot of brown in it, as you can see right there. And it also kind of looks grayish in a way. I don't know. I just love it. The handles that I added on to this really complement the piece very well and I just absolutely think that marble top sets it off. I really love the creativity that I was able to have and the freedom that this piece gave me and I enjoyed this process very very much. It kept me interested, invested, excited, all the things. The results are beautiful and unique, and that's exactly what redesigning means to me. I really love it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure that you subscribe, that you share, that you like and comment, and you tell me definitely what you think about this one. I will be doing another another uh, video, or not another video, but another piece, the one for my mom, and I'll make sure that I send put it at least in my community. And I will catch you guys again soon. Have a great one. Bye.